Well, Elf and Stefan, thank you so much for joining me to talk about this amazing partnership between Hapag Lloyd and Nexiot. Thanks for having us. Now, the term digitalization has been increasingly discussed by carriers such as Hapag Lloyd worldwide, and it is noteworthy that Hapag has been at the forefront of not just propelling these discussions, but also committing to a complete, not just a partial fleet digitalization. Can you share your insights, Olav, on why the timing was right and why a complete rollout was the right way forward? So for Hapag Lloyd, it was uh, always a question of when are we doing this, not if we're doing this at all. And a couple factors came together. On the one hand side, um, together with Nexiot, uh, we saw the technology reaching a level of maturity that will allow us to actually do this sustainably for the full fleet. And full fleet for Hapag Lloyd means in the standard container uh, segment about one and a half million boxes. Uh, about 3 million TEUs that we operate. Now, the big parts of the benefit that we expect to have from this digital smart container fleet uh, will actually become visible if we have all of the containers equipped and we can really start to change how we do things on an operational level and provide our customers real-time visibility on the box level for the, every mile of the transport for every single transport in every part of the world. And this really, this is the driver because the increase from 90% fleet penetration to 100% is double the value. So that's why we decided to go full fleet from the start. Stefan, it is quite spectacular actually, the production installation of 1.5 million devices. This has never been seen before. No, it's, it's really visionary. And I think, you know, this is uh, where Hapag Lloyd has taken it really to the next level. Uh, you require, you know, from all levels of an organization, but it starts at the CEO level, somebody who sees that this industry needs to be changed. And part of it is bringing technology to it, bringing transparency to it. And it's been a pleasure doing it together with Hapag Lloyd. We're talking about ATEX Zone 2 certified devices that were needed here. Why, what does ATEX Zone 2 certified stand for and why was this important here? So the question of safety uh, of technology is a very relevant bus, uh, one for us as a shipping company because we do operate more than 200 vessels um, and uh, these vessels are very big. There's uh, vessels that now carry more than 23,000 containers. And of course, if we imagine to uh, put uh, a tracking device on every single one of them, we need to make sure that it's extremely safe uh, to operate. Now we do transport all sorts of cargo, including dangerous goods. And there are certain areas on the vessels that could be subject to explosive atmospheres. And therefore, whatever we put onto the container needs to withstand these atmospheres and need to be able to operate in these atmospheres. Therefore, we decided to go for a very high safety certification, ATEX Zone 2, uh, which is uh, on every single device. And therefore, our container fleet continues to be extremely safe. And this is you know, where, where we share the same vision also. ATEX is so much of our DNA. You know, we started with it you know, seven years ago and, 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 and it matured over time. And you know, you've seen a device, it has never been done before that the device of this size has been built ATEX certified. So this is quite revolutionary and it will change the shipping industry forever. We're collecting data, we're talking about big data, and that extensive data collection, what kind of a competitive advantage does that provide Hapag Lloyd with? Yeah, so I mean, we're doing this for a reason, and a big part of the reason uh, is our customers who want us to provide more real-time visibility on what's happening to their transports. Now, um, COVID has shown that supply chains are at the core of a lot of things, and if they don't work, uh, you need more information and more data quicker and more reliably in order to smoothen it out. We are creating about 10 times more data um, than we have done traditionally for our container movements. And we will use this data to, on the one hand side, make it available to our customers for their purpose and their use, eventually for their benefit. And we will also use this data to become a, a better shipping company ourselves. And we believe that um, as the first mover starting this journey early, we will be able to provide our customers with more efficient and more high quality transports in the future. So twofold benefits that you have been able to create with this partnership. Yeah. And it's not easy to create the data if you think about it because those containers travel around the world, you know, they cross borders, they need to operate in environments where it's really cold, to environments where it's really warm, there's salty water, etc. So this is the real advancement. 
And ultimately, because it's just a box of steel, the devices need to survive for many, many years in the field. You know, and we're just at the beginning of finding out what you can actually do with the data. So we will be adding levels and levels of the years to come of insights and use cases of what you can deliver with it. And the, the idea behind this, doing this on a global scale, actually uh, forced us uh, together with Nexia to think about many steps of uh, rolling out this technology to mm -hmm. the fleet in a more serious way. Because we're doing every installation 1.5 million times. They need to stay on the box uh, for more than five years, ideally, before we change them for the next generation. So we really nailed all the details of this in mm. order to be as efficient uh, as you need to be when you go global. And it's very small things, you know, you know imagine the, just installation time. You know, it makes a big difference with one and a half million boxes, whether it takes a minute or five minutes. So it's been optimized to every single point, and this is where you know, German engineering, Swiss engineering, probably with a lot of global experience, you know, we're both active in, in you know, 170 plus countries, you know, certainly helps. You cannot shortcut experience there, just, you know, building devices around the globe, deploying them, you know, bringing them to the containers and then instantly start, you know, tracking them is, is certainly something we've mastered very well. You both mentioned that data is very important and broadening data sources mm -hmm is crucial at this stage. Now, Stefan, you're working with strategic partnerships to achieve that. Can you elaborate on that briefly? Yeah, one of them is, for example, Project 44. And, you know, ultimately it's about, you know, monitoring data from door to door. And, 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 and what clients of Hapag Lloyd want to know is, you know, when will my shipment arrive ultimately at the last mile? And, and, and this is where you need uh, to also have uh, people like Project 44 who are obsessed about you know, just finding out everything around ETAs, but they heavily depend on smart containers who can actually create the data while you're traveling. And that's been a challenge. Historically, you know, everyone in the industry has been really good about telling you whether something arrived within seven days or a couple of days and you missed important deadlines. You were really good in tracking ships, but we've taken it now down to the container level. And different players in the industry play different roles. And, and again, it's not so much only us defining it, but it's Hapag Lloyd, you know, providing a global infrastructure of now smart containers and other people in the industry will follow, which then, you know, launch very interesting business models of what you can do with the data. And then uh, sometimes it's also very good to partner with, with, with other companies who are really good in what they're doing. And these partnerships create a direct advantage for you. We appreciate that uh, Nexet is looking out for our interests and for, for us and our purpose, which is to serve uh, our customers better, being the number one for quality. Mm -hmm. And now the, um, the question of how do we bring visibility on the box level to our end customers is certainly driving us right now. And uh, there are uh, a range of opportunities out there, which we are uh, very much looking forward to explore and learn. And uh, I think the journey that we are on is just starting. There's going to be a lot of new partnerships uh, to be found in the future and also a lot of new things to be done. We're both also on a mission to optimize a lot of the things. And one of them is, for example, you know, reduced amount of illicit goods which are being transported around the world or help to drive down sustainability uh, uh, consumption or CO2 consumption, optimize the sustainability levels by reducing the amount of empty boxes which are being shipped around in the world. And you can only do that with trusted parties. And this is why it's so important that you have brands uh, like Hapag Lloyd and Nexiot constantly thinking about those topics because only we can provide you know, the insights to other players in the, in the industry, like port authorities who want to have you know, a, you know, an audit trail that the, the doors haven't been opened overnight in, in a place where they shouldn't have been opened. So all the data sources that you tap into and all the potential that you have because of this partnership actually drives change for our planet for sustainability as well. Absolutely. And we're just at the beginning of what we're seeing there. Um, you, you know, if you're, if you're a client uh, like one of the larger retailers in the world and you have an opportunity to transport your goods either in a smart container or in a non-smart container, ultimately, you know, uh, you have the choice. And it's very similar like as individuals in a personal environment we will always go into your example, you know, initially when you said, you know, why can we track the pizzas? Why can we track our child and our dogs, etc.? 
we opt for technology if it brings simplicity, transparency, etc. And it's the same thing in this industry. So you know, there's certainly a lot of positive change there. Everything is being tracked. High time we start tracking our containers. I mean, if you think about it, more than 90% of world trade is happening in the ocean, but uh, there's uh, right now just a fraction of a percentage being tracked. Now for Hapagloid, this will change, uh, having the smartest container fleet of the world, and we believe others will follow. And eventually, the underlying principle that we try to implement is that with having more data that we can transform into information, we can ultimately do things better. Now we have to believe into that, and uh, we do. That's why we went full fleet. Um, how this exactly will look like, that's the journey we're on and the mission we need to achieve. Mm -hmm. And two, two use cases to add on. We're constantly thinking about what are we doing with the data. We're having lots of trials. We see a lot of patterns around the world already. You know, this is, we're in the middle of the rollout, but we will be you know, very far advanced by the end of the year. And so you suddenly have every day you know, dots popping up in, in, in geographically also interesting places of this world, you know, in Asia or around, you know, Korea, Japan, China, you know, along, you know, alongside the Russian borders in, you know, part of Eastern Europe, in the Middle East, etc. And with it, it automatically brings certain use case demands and, and, and other, you know, relevant questions of the kind of goods which are being transported around. So this is also a continuous learning journey. And with everything new that you are learning that, that flows into this partnership, and we, we create mutual benefits. And, and, and all I've just said, you know, they want to be the best quality provider for their own services. It actually allows you to engage in a very different way with your clients, because if you understand their pain points, if you understand what it actually means that goods are not arriving in time, you're a global automotive uh, uh, provider, you know, what does it actually mean if certain parts have arrived and other parts have not arrived? You know, bringing that clarity and that quality by by adding transparency to it is a lot of benefit to the client and actually ultimately means clients also engage very differently with you as an organization. There are new technologies, trending technologies such as AI. How do you perceive the role of trending technologies in general? Overall, I think container shipping being an asset-heavy industry operating vessels across the ocean, we do use a lot of technology, but the container in its design uh, has been created 50 years ago uh, and is still the same. So now we're going to probably the next generation uh, in containers. Technologies play a really big role for us as a shipping company. In the sense of IoT on containers, uh, we are um, creating about 10 times as much data right now um, than we have done a year ago with our containers. Now, of course, we need to start working with that data and we need to build up new skills, etc., to use that data and uh, emerging technologies for instance, AI are certainly one tool to help us do that. And you have exactly such tool to turn big data into relevant data and into making that, that relevant data accessible. It's called Scope AI, Stefan. Mm -hmm. what, what is Scope AI all about? Well, it ultimately lets you play in a very easy way with, uh, with the data. And so, you know, think about a client like Hapag Lloyd, which wants to investigate, you know, use cases around the data. So saying, how many assets are currently traveling you know, for a certain region. How many doors have been opened unexpectedly overnight? So that, you know, in a traditional way, you would have, you know, written reports and it might have taken you know, a couple of days to get those answers. You know, something like Scope AI lets you play around with that data instantly in a very conversational way. So the same way, you know, you and I probably play around, or the three of us play around with ChatGPT. We ask questions to, to investigate, and once you see the first results, you, you ask the next question, etc. You drill down level by level. You do exactly the same thing with Scope AI. We just, again, at the beginning, it, it, it's already, it gives us goosebumps when we play around with it <laughs> at the moment, but it's just the beginning, and we will really see a lot more coming there in the next couple of years. So we are replacing complex spreadsheet analyses with a very simple question, which can come from a carrier, from a client, whatever stakeholder can just ask a simple question from their perspective. Or you could also say we're democratizing the way you can actually engage with the data, that it's not Hapak Lloyd asking us 
and, and, and us running, you know, and creating that report, but it's actually everyone playing themselves with their own data because ultimately Hapag Lloyd owns the data. They also want to have, you know, a very easy way of engaging and, and, and turning that data into relevant information. And the easiest way you can do that if you can directly interact with it. I think for, um, for us, um, being a traditional shipping company, we are at the uh, just very early days of discovering uh, what AI can mean for us. But one thing we certainly uh, believe is that for AI to make sense and be a benefit, you need to have a lot of high quality data mm -hmm. to feed right, the machine in order to provide you good answers. And uh, therefore container tracking is one piece of the puzzle. Um, if we do that right, we will be able to use AI to its full extent. To add to that, there's different kinds of assets you need to look at. So there's the containers who move around, but there's also fixed assets like ports in the world and, and terminals, etc., ships, where you have lots of containers you know, being grouped in one single asset. Now, what you want to do is you want to interact between different points. So, you know, containers entering ports, containers leaving certain terminals, gates, etc. Again, sounds very simple, very difficult to realize. Why? Because sometimes you have just too much data available. Either you have no data available or too much data available. So this is an elegant way of actually taking it down to a level where people can take decisions. We've already started to paint that picture of an ideal bright future where everything is connected. We have the right data. We get, we get to use it for, for all of our benefits. In a future, Olaf, where everything becomes feasible, what would, from your perspective, what would global cargo transportation look like? Well, there's certainly one thing uh, that we believe in, and that is that cargo transport will still be uh, at the heart of a lot of things. So we need to do it. But one thing I would wish for is that we do it in a very safe and clean way. There is a big challenge for us as a container shipping company to decarbonize and uh, to steer into a greener future. And one uh, part of this journey is to um, reduce the amount of unnecessary trips, the amount of um, things we do that uh, we shouldn't do or shouldn't have done. And uh, to figure this one out, that's one thing that, uh, that I think will be drastically improving uh, over the next couple of years. So I'm very positive about it because ultimately it means we will remove uncertainty by making every single container in the world smart and that will be to the benefits uh, of our clients. So I very much look forward of bringing that as our you know, main purpose to the industry. Stefan and Olaf, thank you so much for your insights into this partnership between Hapag Lloyd and Nexiot. Thank you. Absolutely.